people, the Israelites, to try to stone him and kill him as well. So we see that the process to getting to Jesus is not easy. But I guarantee you, brothers and sisters, that there is a light. There is freedom, yes. you know, and we could all have freedom. We don't need to live in this oppression. Yes, we don't need to live in this life of uh, of depression uh, at all. You know, I, I remember getting married, and in my lifestyle of uh, homosexuality, <clears throat> I, was de- uh, I was depressed, but I also had a lot of freedom to do what I wanted, and I felt as though, hey, maybe, you know, I'm not, you know, depressed. Maybe this is, you know, I I didn't have many days where I was completely down because I would get out of one relationship, get in another, get out of one, get in another. And at that time, I thought that was the, you know, the thing to do. It Depression didn't come until I actually got married. Hmm. And, and, And it was because I didn't have the freedom to do all the things that I wanted to do. Now, here I am married, I have these kids, and um, I have my husband, and I didn't know how to be a wife, and I surely didn't know how to be a mother, you know. It's like everything just started to happen rapidly. And um, my husband, you know, he was trying everything he could to make me happy, and it, and I would tell him, it's not you, it's it's really me. I don't know what's going on with me. But here I am again on my knees. And I'm asking God to help me, to save me, to help me from this depressed state, to show me what it is. And it was the enemy trying to make me think that what I was doing way back when was better than what's happening for me now. But I've known the devil to be a liar. And God is not the author of confusion. So I prayed and I sought the Lord and I prayed. And I prayed, and I would continue to pray until that spirit broke off of me. The spirit of depression had to break. I'm no longer depressed anymore, but I sit here, and um, and I smile often at my husband and my children, and I'm just like, you know, wow, God, look at what you've done for me. Look at the things that you've given me. Now I see the light, like you said, at the end of the tunnel. I can see uh, what God was uh, almost like what he was trying to do and 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 uh what he's what he's done you know in my life and the things that he's given me these children my children are not a depression my husband are not they're the best thing to ever happen to me had they not been in place or been here for me i would possibly just still be back and forth doing what you know god knows what but i mean i'm telling you this is my my kids and my husband are the best thing uh, that has ever happened to me, and I truly, I thank God for them. And in the midst of, you know, being able to be married and things like that, you know, I, um, uh, in the depression state and how I was able to get out of it as well, um, God told me one night to just write. And I, I have, I'm actually looking at them right now, my different journals that I had. I have like four or five of them sitting here now where God told me to just write. And unbeknown to me, I didn't know it would turn into a book. My husband said, oh, it looks like you're writing a book. And I said, a book? And he said, yeah, it looks like you're writing a book. And I said, oh, I don't know. I said, I just heard God say write, and this is actually very therapeutic for me. And I wrote everything from what I felt from way back when I was a child about my mom and about my dad, all the way up until now me being married and having my children. And the book, uh, it actually did turn out to be a book, and I didn't know the direction that God wanted me to go in with it. He ended up uh, ordering my footsteps, and um, because I just thought it was a, an avenue for me to vent. These were just my, my secret notes. But there was a young lady who actually approached me, and she said, um, what are you doing this summer? And so I'm looking at her, and I'm like, uh, what do you mean? What, what am I doing you know, this summer. She said, what are you doing this summer? I said, oh, nothing. She said, did you do anything special? I said, well, I'm writing a book, I think. And she said, well, God told me that you're my assignment, and um, I'm supposed to help you for this summer. And this young lady actually is an editor. She ended up editing my book, and not only did she edit it, she edited my book for free. And so my book is self-published, and um and then I, I asked the Lord again. I'm just like, well, God, you know, the book is it's done. What do you what do you want me to call it? What would I call it? 
And I heard him say, coming out. So the name of the book is called Coming Out. And my little portion that I wanted to have on there, and, and God allowed me to do it, it's called Coming Out. And then uh, the subheading is Memoirs of a Girl Screaming Within. And so I give this book to the many women and men who are out there hurting, who want to come out of the lifestyle of homosexuality or if they're even bound in a relationship with a man who is just, you know, out of control, anything that they're bound by, by this book actually speaks to that. You can find it on Amazon. You can get it on Kindle. It's like nine ninety nine on Kindle and uh, $15 on Amazon. It's a great read. Amen. Sister, what about if uh, some of our, our listeners want to get in contact with you about the book or just ask you any questions? Do you have an email or any form, any way that they could communicate with you? Yeah, you can actually reach me at T. Carvel, and that's T C A R V I L 29 at Gmail. Like I said, the enemy's trying to stop my voice. I haven't coughed all day, Brother Lewis. <laughs> anytime you talk, sister, about a topic like what we're talking today, the enemy's going to attack. Uh, it was rough uh, for me as well. Um, I have a family member that died, and I have my wife in the funeral, and I'm here because this is ah. this is that important to me where people need help, and God has called me to be a voice for him. But going back to what you said, you know, there was something that you said that was very important. You said that you get to a point, right, where you want to retreat. And we go back to the book of Exodus, right? And right when Moses takes him through the the Red Sea and they get to the other side and everything mm-hmm. else, uh, these people get to a point where Moses goes up the mountain and then they go, you know what? Let's make ourselves a, a calf. We were better off with Pharaoh. And now they were thinking about a returning back to bondage. And that's what the devil tries to do, sister. The devil tries to, at one point, discourage you from continuing the walk. We yeah. get so many people that walk, that start walking with Christ. And all of a sudden, they run into a little uh, problem, a little situation, and then they run. It's amazing how I've seen people where God has done miracles, signs, and wonders. And then all of a sudden, they trip or they remember uh, one thing that comes to the mind. That's why God says to guard your mind, because the devil throws darts at your mind, bringing uh, your past. We're not as oh, Christians. That's good, brother Lewis. You know, yeah, we're, yeah, we're not. We're not um, we're, as Christians. We're not concerned with our past. That's why when we're born again, we're we're born into a new creation. And what that means, you no longer are that person that died. Uh, when you were submerged in that water on that cross, now you belong to Jesus. So now you're looking towards your future. Well, how is your life going to be? So, uh, sister, uh, tell the people, how has your life changed? How do you feel now with your children? Uh, what kind of joy do you have that you didn't have before when you were involved in these type of things? Well, you, you said something that was really, 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 really great. And... A lot of people, not just the homosexual community, but a lot of people deal with uh, things in their past that comes up. And sometimes, you know, those things, um, they feel good for a moment. But did they ever make you feel, you know, really good, you know? And we can get to a point where we're thinking, oh, well, what I was doing before, you know, made me feel like this, and maybe I should go back to it. And that's what the enemy does. He makes it look good. I get those things that come to me often, and they say that the enemy will leave you for a season, and then he'll come back. And that's what he does back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with me. And he'll leave me for a season, then he'll come back. He'll leave me for a season, then he'll come back. But I continue in prayer. I mean, I've been married now for 10 years, coming up in May, and we've been together for 11 years. And I haven't, I've never cheated on my husband. I've never done anything outside of my marriage. And if any thoughts or anything come, the the one thing that I love and, and that I have in my husband that no one else can do is he prays for me. So people say, you know, you know, uh, uh, what do you mean? I tell my husband everything. And this is what makes our relationship so strong. 
if there's an attack on my mind, I tell my husband, listen, this is what's happening. This is what I'm thinking of. I need you to help me. And you know what? He gets on his knees. He held, he holds my hand, and he prays for me. He is my covering. And this is who I go to. Uh, that you know, it, it, The Bible says that when a man findeth a wife, he's found a good thing, and he's obtained favor from the Lord. So he goes to, the, to God in prayer, and he, you know, that favor that he has from God, God listens to him, and he helps me. And those things, they flee from me. They leave me because my husband sits and he intercedes on my behalf. Even when I'm feeling weak, he gets in there and he gets before the Lord and he prays for his wife. He prays for his family. So I have a praying husband who not only loves me, but he prays for me. And that's the best thing that any woman could ever have is her covering to pray for her. And so uh, that is one of the joys that I actually love when I'm feeling weak. I can hear my husband, you know, over me praying. Uh, he's also, he plays the saxophone, and I remember when I was pregnant with our children, he would sit and he would read the Word and he would, you know, rub my stomach and he would pray and read the Word while he's uh, praying. But then to put me to sleep and to put the baby to sleep, he would play the saxophone. And my children are musically inclined. They love music and, and things like that. And, and those are the things, those are the joys. I've never had anything like that ever before in my life. If I need to be, you know, if, I, if I'm a little bit overly excited about something or frustrated, my husband knows how to come in with a calm voice, a calm spirit, and uh, and he comes in and he, you know, he knows how to soothe me. And and it's not nothing sexual because I've had enough sex that I could have in my lifetime, you know. He knows how to just compliment me and and make me feel wanted and and love on me just the way that God has designed. Yeah. So, you know, I, I I you know you think about um, <clears throat> excuse me, my old pastor he would say, when you marry a man, he should remind you of God. And when I uh, when I said yes to my husband, I, and a lot of people asked me, well, did I love him? I said, even if I didn't love him, I knew that he would be for me. I knew that I needed him in my life. The times where I didn't love myself, it seems like he loved me more than I, that I could love myself. The times where I wanted to give up, he was there to say, no, don't give up. You know, when I wanted to give up on our marriage, he said, no, I'm not going to give up on you. God told me that you're my wife. He told me that you were going to be my wife. I know that things are tough right now, and I know it looks hard for you, but you're not going to run away from me because I was good for running, running away, jumping out of one relationship, getting in another. This is the longest relationship that I've ever been in, and I don't want to get out of it. Wow. And I, I've never had that before. I have stability in my husband. He's stable. I haven't worked in nine years because he wants me to, you know, be have the joys of being a stay-at-home mom. And and, and it's not that I can't work, you know. Um, I, I you know I have a college degree. I can go, you know, and work. But he wants me to, you know, to be here to be with with our kids. I am even actually finishing up, you know, another degree that I wanted. He's like, do that, and when you're done, you know, I just want you to, you know, to be happy. I've never had that. I didn't have my father in my life, and and to have a man to know how to hold me without trying to have sex with me or know how to talk to me without uh, saying harsh words to me or berating me, he lifts me up. My husband lifts me up, and he speaks positive things in me. Uh, he pushes me into the things of God and tell me that I can do it. Wow. Who wouldn't want a man like that? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, because a lot of, perhaps a lot of the ladies out there that, uh, you know, are dealing with this uh, sin, right? Uh, they're hearing, well, men are bad uh, people, you know, all they do is they want to, you know, uh, abuse of you and they want sex and that's all. But the bottom right. line is that you haven't met a Christian man. And I'm that's just, right. and what I'm just talking about, just not any Christian man, a Christian man, somebody that follows the Bible, somebody that respects his wife the way the Bible says, you know, so, so listen, just because these people are telling you these things, don't believe that because Listen to what 
the word of God says in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. 